you guys. Today I'm breaking the cardinal rule about not talking about it when your baby's doing well. Um, and I just kind of want to brag about how she's been sleeping. Um, baby is four months old now, just four months old. Um, and for the last couple of weeks, we've been working really hard on a bedtime routine and on getting her to fall asleep on her own. So um, what our bedtime routine looks like is sometime after six. I'm aiming for it to be a little bit later. I think ideally I'd like her to go to bed at like 7.30 maybe. Um, but a lot of times she's tired enough to go to sleep at like 6.45 or 7. So with uh, daylight savings time ending, we're trying to push that back. But uh, we get her into the nursery. We change her and put her in her overnight diaper and her pajamas. Then I feed her as, you know, take as much time as I need to feed her up as full as possible so that she can sleep as long as possible. Um, after that we go into the bathroom down the hall and brush her teeth. She doesn't have any teeth yet, but we're trying to get her used to the toothbrush. So it just takes a couple minutes, we get the toothbrush wet and kind of rub at her gums and then hand it to her and let her kind of suck on it a little bit just so she gets used to the toothbrush. Um, so that when her teeth do come in, we'll be able to, you know, brush them with hopefully, hopefully a little bit less trouble than uh, otherwise. Then we come back into the nursery, read a bedtime story, and then we swaddle her and then bring her into the, um, the bedroom. She's sleeping in the pack and play next to our bed. Um, and I sing to her Rainbow Connection and Stay Awake. And then uh, put her down and she falls asleep on her own within around five to 10 minutes. Um, I know this is controversial, but we actually, <sighs> I don't know if we what we technically did was technically cry it out or if it was fuss it out or whatever. I know you're not supposed to really do cry it out until like four to six months and we were starting to do this around three and a half. But we realized one night like she had just had her diaper changed, she was full, she was dry, she was you know just tired. She was just tired. Um, and so we decided to see what would happen, and she fell asleep on her own within 15 minutes. I just, you know, went into the bathroom with the fan on, played on my phone until she... <laughs> uh, so I didn't have to listen. Um, and uh, yeah, I know this is controversial, and people say it's like child abuse or whatever, but when she's tired, like, I find now that, like, if I... If she's crying, and I pick her up and try to console her, she just keeps crying. She just needs to work it out. She's tired. Um... So anyway, we tried doing that, just sort of laying her to sleep in the bed awake and letting her fall asleep on her own. Um, after about a week, it was the first night that she didn't even like talk to herself. She just fell straight asleep within five minutes. Um, and she's been doing pretty good. Like last night she cried for about five minutes. Um, and like I said, it's like I tried picking her up and she just kept crying. She just needed to, to work it out. And I think a lot of times when I'm singing to her, she's kind of fussing. Like, I, I get the feeling that she just wants to be set down so that she can fall asleep. Um, because she does get very tired and, you know, considering that I don't really start the bedtime routine until she's already starting to get tired. And I'm trying to push that back farther. I think she really is tired by the end of it. So, these are kinks to be worked out. Um, but, so we get her down. She goes down on her own. And then she gets her her good chunk of sleep at that point. Um, so she's usually sleeping seven to nine hours a night. Um, she'll usually, like I said, go to sleep at like seven, wake up around three um, to eat. And then again, she'll start to wake up every two or every, yeah, like two hours or so until the morning. Um, and then she wakes up good to go between 5.30 and 6.30, which, you know, also would be nice to push back, especially with daylight savings ending. Um, but that chunk of sleep is really great that it's starting to become more reliable, you know, at least that first chunk. And I know she's too young to, to night wean, we're still feeding her overnight, so just kind of focusing on one thing at a time. Um, it has been so great to have that chunk of time um, where I know that she's going to be asleep four hours, um, and it's still, you know, relatively early in the evening. Uh, so my husband and I have been able to eat dinner together. Um, back when she was going to bed later and not sleeping as long, we wouldn't really be able to because she would be awake and fussing and one of us would have to hold her all the time. 
and we'd have to take turns eating. Now we get to eat together, we get to, you know, have conversations and watch Netflix and, uh, you know, get things done. I have taken to, um, putting a line on my planner for each day of, like, the thing that I'm going to do after she goes to bed. And that's something that I can count on, and it is amazing. This is something that, um, when you're in that newborn fog for the first two or three months, you don't even realize is attainable. But having just a little bit of something to hold on to that is like a, a scheduled thing is just so great. And um, yeah, so I guess what I would encourage you to do if you're looking for that is to focus on like sleep hygiene and, and bedtime routines and stuff. But really it's a developmental thing and some babies get it quickly. Some babies are sleeping on their own, you know, full, through the night for at like six weeks. Others are still, you know, fussing and being nursed to sleep at, you know, two years old. So like every baby's different and every family's different. So I'm not trying to like encourage or um, say that like one way is better than another. Um, because heaven knows I'm, you know, opening myself up to criticism just by even telling you what my <laughs> strategies are. Um, but yeah, our, the next goal for her sleep is to get her out of the swaddle. Um, that has been a crutch that, um, I tried doing one arm out a week or two, a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, after she started sleeping, you know, falling asleep fine, I was like, okay, great, now we'll do the swaddle. I took one arm out and she wasn't having any of it um and she really yeah just it, I don't know if it's just too much um I think I'm going to try again tonight because she just rolled over from her back to her front for the first time this morning and granted that wasn't swaddled or anything and I think it's harder when they are swaddled but also I've been loosening the swaddle and swaddling her arms up so that she can suck on her thumb because I do find she self soothes she rolls over onto her side and sucks her thumb um, but I think it's just so much effort to pull her hand in and keep it there because as she starts to fall asleep, it drops and then she wakes up again. Um, but I mean, she's older now than the last time we tried it, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is the current struggle is trying to get her out of the swaddle. That'll be good when she's just in pajamas because she's, she does run hot overnight. She wakes up and like her whole her neck and back are sweaty, and I feel bad that she's all wrapped up, but she really, she doesn't sleep as well without it. Um, and yeah, so I'm trying like one goal at a time. You know, first we got bedtime, we got the swaddle, um, and then I think sometime around six months we'll consider moving her out of the pack and play and into the nursery here. Um, and also at that point, maybe play around with with dropping one or two of the overnight feeds and see, you know, like the ideal goal someday is to be able to put her to bed in her own room, have her fall asleep on her own, wake up in the morning. You know, once she's out of the swaddle, um, I'm hoping that she'll be happier in the mornings because she kind of, when she's ready to wake up at like 5.30 or 6, she's um, like fussing a lot and sort of, you know, wiggling. And I think she's like, I'm done with the swaddle now, let me out. And we have to let her out um, because she's pretty happy on her own if she's not hungry. Um, so it'd be kind of nice I'd be able to maybe doze a little bit longer in the mornings while she's just sort of babbling to herself. Anyway, multiple goals for the future, but for now we've got one goal down and another one on the way. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to brag and say that it's been really great and that like, you know, it gets better um, if you're the mother of a newborn, like things start to regulate on their own. They really do. Like, I, I kept looking at people whose young babies had schedules going, how does that happen? How do I do that? Because, you know, with, we have um, four, five different people on various rotations to take care of her on any given day. So it's, it's a lot to ask my father-in-law to, like, try, you know, crib time, um, you know, and put up with her fussing and crying. You know, it's, it's enough to ask me to do that, to ask somebody else to be like strict with the schedule. It's not happening. So we're letting her kind of go at her own pace developmentally for what her schedule is. That was very rambly. Um, if you watch that whole thing, like 
spirit mothers, hi. Um, we're probably in the same place right now, so good luck to you. Um, I hope that you get good sleep tonight. And if you're interested in more of these baby things, I've been posting those on Sundays, so if you subscribe, you will be able to see those. So I will see you in my next video on Tuesday, and then again next week. Have a good one. Bye.